أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون إلا من أتى الله بقلب سليم الآية صدق الله العظيم We praise and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has blessed us to be gathered in his home in the house of Allah to praise and glorify him to reflect and to mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remind ourselves that we are the slaves and Allah azza wa jal is our master the purpose, the purpose of Jumu'ah it is much more than just simply attending our Dhuhr Salah at a place of congregation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran إِذَا نُورِيَ لِلصَّلَاةِ مِنْ يَوْمِ الْجُمْعَةِ فَاسْعُوا إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَذَرُوا الْبَيْعَ That when you call to the Salatul Jum'ah, then leave what you're doing and hasten to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So our purpose and our objective of gathering here is that each and every one of us can stop for a moment and put aside our busy schedules, our jobs and occupations, whatever it is we were occupied in, we leave it and we answer the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We answer the call towards the remembrance of Allah azza wa jal. We stop for a moment and remind ourselves that we serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before anything and anyone else. That yes, I have a, a boss to answer to and a family to provide for. But in spite of my needs and requirements and job demands, I've left everything and I turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ultimate master, the one who is in charge of my very existence. This is the purpose of Jum'ah. This is why Jum'ah is important. This is why it is compulsory. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that on the day of Qiyamah, the things that we appreciate and the things which get us benefits in this world would be of absolutely no benefit to us on the day of Qiyamah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes this clear by mentioning the two things which we hold most dear in this world. Allah makes it clear. There is absolutely no benefit on the day of Qiyamah in your children and your wealth. In this world, money makes things happen. You can pay someone and you pay the right price and the right person and anything can be done. Anything you ask can be done for the right price. That is the way this world works. <clears throat> so we have grown to appreciate the benefits that we derive from this wealth. And as such, in our minds, the more wealth we have, the more authority we have, the more we can get done, the more accomplished we feel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear that on the day of Qiyamah, this wealth would lose its value. Wala banun. If some if our money doesn't do it for us, then we feel proud and we feel strength by the size and this position of our children and our families. This gives us authority. But Allah reminds us as well that this second thing which you hold so dear 
would also be devalued on the day of Qiyamah. So your wealth and your children would lose its value instantly on that day. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ So what is it that will benefit us? If the things which we hold most dear in this world have just been devalued and would be of no benefit to us on the day of Qiyamah, then what is it that we are hoping to derive some bit of success and benefit from on the day of Qiyamah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completes the verse, إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ the only thing we would left to be bargaining with, the only thing we can bring before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that would be of any benefit to us on the day of Qiyamah is a pure heart, a sound heart, a heart that is intact, a heart that is free from sickness and illness and ailments, not physically, of course not physically. The cardiologist will tell you, the physical benefits of having a physically healthy heart. But the Quran tells us about the benefits and the importance of purifying and keeping healthy our spiritual heart. Now this is something which is a great ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when a person has a heart, firstly. When a person's spiritual heart is alive and healthy. When a person's spiritual heart is clean and pure, it is one of the greatest ni'mah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can bestow upon anyone. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he used to say, he said, look to see if you have a heart. Utlub qalbaka inda thalati mawatid. At three instances, you should analyze yourself Check to see if there's a reaction, an emotion, a feeling within yourself that is an indication that you have a heart. Again, not a physical heart. That your spiritual heart exists. So he said, check to see if that heart is existing. If it's alive and beating. اطلب قلبك عند ثلاث مواطن عند مجالة الذكر The first instance where we check to see whether our heart is healthy or alive for the minimum is in the majalis al dhikr when we attend when we attend gatherings like this when we attend majalis like the one we are presently in where allah's name is being mentioned and we're reminded of our duty to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do we feel something in our heart in our hearts so as we sit here let us follow this advice and contemplate and analyze our own self on an inner personal level. Where is my spiritual heart? In this majlis of dhikr, let us contemplate and reflect on the condition of our inner self, our spiritual hearts. So that's the first instance that we check for our hearts. He then continues, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud continues, he says, Check the second place you check to see if your heart is well and alive. When you hear the Quran being recited. When you hear the Quran being recited. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the believers. A'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ The believers are such that when when they are reminded of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ When Allah's name is mentioned when they're reminded of their duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Their hearts shiver. Their hearts react. They feel something. Either a sense of guilt, that we're not doing what we're supposed to do to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or a sense of pride, that I'm proud to say that I have obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And there's no, nothing wrong in feeling both. We might have strengths and we might have weaknesses. We might have good deeds that we are well accomplished at. And we might have sins which constantly bug us and affect our lives. That we can't seem to shake. So there's nothing wrong with feeling guilt and feeling happiness at the same time. When we're reminded of our duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The believers are such that when they're reminded of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their hearts become affected. وَإِذَا تُلْيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتٍ And when Allah's ayats are recited before them, زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ The reaction they get from the listening to the verses of the Qur'an and being reminded of the meaning of these verses is that it increases their iman. Their level of conviction in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rises. The way they are sure that Jannah is real and Jahannam is real and the day of Qiyamah is real, it increases and becomes more fortified. Their iman becomes more strengthened. There is no doubt in their hearts. وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ And at that moment, the believer submits himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and places his trust in the promise of Allah. That, oh Allah, you promised me this for sacrifice in my desires, my needs, and my, my obligations in this world to serve you. And I will do it to receive the reward that you have promised. So they put their trust solely in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No doubt in the promise of Allah azza wa jal. This is a believer. So in the Sima'il Qur'an, the second place to check the heart at the time when the verses of the Qur'an are being recited. Do you feel that the effects of the Qur'an on our hearts? And the third place, the third instance that we check to see if our hearts are there, as told to us by Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he said, in the awqat al khulwa at the times of seclusion, not with our spouses, at the time of absolute seclusion, where the gatherings of the masajids have gone away, where we go to our homes or in our cars and we by ourselves, we by ourselves. And at that moment, there is no one to judge us based on our physical appearance. There is no one to impress by our fancy words. There is no one to convince them that we are good people. It is between us and Allah Azza wa Jal. At that moment of seclusion and that private moment where an individual realizes his true value and worth, where a person reflects on his own heart and his own condition and knows to himself honestly, this is where I stand, this is what I'm doing, this is what I should not be doing, and these are the things that I'm lacking in. This is my connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the moment where we check to see how our heart reacts. <clears throat> this is the absolute most private moment that a person will have. When no one is around, it, no one is there to judge him based on what he says and how he dresses. No one is there to praise him and glorify him. But he knows within his heart, his honest truth, where he stands and his connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows the condition of his heart. He understands his weaknesses and his strengths. He knows the deeds that he performs regularly, the sincerity with which he performs it. He knows those sins which constantly affect him, which constantly he falls back into, which he's constantly trying to stay away from. He's well aware. بَلِ الْإِنسَانُ عَلَىٰ نَفْسِهِ بَصِيرًا Mankind, every individual, has the most insight and knowledge over his own self. When all is said and done, every person understands whether he's a good Muslim, a genuine believer, or he's not. There's no pretending there. That is our genuine assessment of ourselves. What is my connection to my Creator? Forget a moment, for a moment, forget about community, family, children, wife, husband, and assess yourself, your personal connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the third instance where we check our hearts. Ibn Mas'ud Allah when he continues, he said, فَإِن لَمْ تَجِدْ فَإِن لَمْ تَجِدْ If you find no reaction, 
if you find nothing within there, nothing, no sign of a heart, no conscience telling you that you should be doing more or you're not doing some things, you're lacking in certain areas of your Islam, or you're not fulfilling the rights of your parents, your spouse, your children, whatever it is that falls upon the individual. If you find nothing inside, then Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said, فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهَ أَيَّ مُنَّ عَلَيْكَ بِقَلْبٍ Then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you with a heart because you have no heart. At that moment, raise your hands and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring your heart back to life. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to revive your heart so that it becomes affected, so that it becomes worried when you're not committing, when, you, when you're not committing good deeds, when you're not performing good deeds and when you're committing too many sins. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, beg Him to revive your heart. Our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that when we commit sins constantly, when we engage in a life of disobedience to Allah azza wa jal, every sin causes a black dot to appear on the heart. Every sin causes a black dot to appear on the heart. And when this black dot appears, it will only be removed by tawbah. It will be only, only be removed by a good deed that can remove the effects of it. By repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or by, by re reciting the Quran and remembering death. But if we don't make any move or any initiative is taken to remove the black dots and the effects of sin on our hearts, then, and we continue to commit sins, then e every sin causes the black dot to appear. And eventually that person's heart is covered in black dots. Yes, if you open his chest, you will find a healthy heart maybe. But his spiritual heart has been covered. His spiritual heart is engulfed in darkness. How does this manifest itself in the real world? In a spiritual sense, his heart is covered in darkness. In the world that we live in, in the physical world, this manifests itself in the form of that individual who has committed so many sins, so many mistakes, and has committed the same sin so many times that it no longer bothers him that he's committing the sin. He's no longer worried, why am I not performing my salah? He's no longer worried about the times that he did not fast in the month of Ramadan. He's no longer worried about his duty as a Muslim. He engages in haram and interests and usury. He consumes halal and haram and he doesn't care. It no longer affects him. This is when that heart has become engulfed in darkness. This is when the heart has died. This is that punishment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about. We are to be taken away the ability to differentiate between right and wrong and the conscience that will tell a person that he's committing a sin. The guilty conscience will be taken away. And becoming, committing sins will become easy for him. We cannot allow our hearts to get to this level. So the Prophet ﷺ was asked, how do you cleanse the heart? And he said, frequent remembrance of death and recitation of the Qur'an. Engage in recitation of the Qur'an and constantly remind yourself that I have to appear in front of Allah Azza wa Jal one day. My life isn't about satisfying my desires. It is about fulfilling the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything that we do, every action, good or bad, leaves an impression on the heart. It molds our spiritual heart in a certain way. Every action, every good thing that we do, it takes our heart in the direction of good. Our hearts become accustomed to and becomes familiar with good deeds. But if we don't perform good deeds, and we are constantly engaged in sins and mistakes and errors. And we constantly feed those sins into the hearts through the various channels by looking at haram. Those who we are not supposed to look at lustfully. By listening to haram, the music. By consuming haram, 
the doubtful food by engaging in the haram transactions or even that which is doubtful it suddenly molds our hearts in the direction of those things and the first time we commit this sin we will feel guilty about it the first time we miss a salah the first time we engage in haram it will bother us why? because our heart is still healthy but if we don't repent for that sin and we go back to doing it over and over and over again and we constantly miss that Salat al-Fajr over and over and over then a time will come when we'll open our eyes laying in our beds and we don't even feel the need or the concern to get up and perform that Salat al-Fajr our hearts have become so normal and so much acceptance has entered the heart for not performing the Salat al-Fajr that we're no longer worried about the outcome of not performing it the heart is no longer bothered by it the Prophet sallallahu told us in the hadith إِذَا سَرَّتْكَ حَسَنَاتُكَ وَسَاءَتْكَ سَيِّئَاتُكَ فَأَنْتَ مُؤْمِنٌ would you like to know if you're a believer if your good deeds bring you happiness and your mistakes and your sins bring you sadness then you're a believer if your good deeds bring you happiness the day that you get up and perform your salah on time and you can give some charity and you fulfill your duties to those around you and you stay away from looking at haram or listening to haram that is your most pleasant day that is a sign of iman then you are a believer and when your day that you don't get to perform your salah and you engage in doubtful activities and you commit sin after sin it becomes a sad day for you then you are a believer because your spiritual heart is alive just as we are concerned about our physical heart we should even be more than that concerned about our spiritual heart our physical heart is beneficial to us as long as we exist in this physical world but the spiritual heart is essential to our success in this world as well as the day of Qiyamah which would determine the outcome for the rest of our existence in the Akhirah we cannot afford to neglect our spiritual self we cannot afford to just go by our lives never reflecting upon my spiritual my level of spiritual connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we cannot just go on and think that I'm healthy, I'm happy, I live in this world I fulfill my needs and my, and my desires nothing to worry about I'm successful in this world stop for a moment in those moments of privacy with your own self and you know and I know where we stand with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala am I really the Muslim that people think I, I am? Am I really the person that people, my family think I am? And you don't have to answer to them or your community, but you have to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to purify that heart by committing good deeds, by performing good actions, righteous deeds, and by staying away from sins. We cannot expect to commit sins and have a healthy spiritual heart. This isn't the way it works. We have to stay away from those sins. As difficult as it might be, we have to make an effort to stay away from the mistakes and the doubtful things that we are constantly engaged in. Stay away from those places where sins are more likely to take place. The Prophet ﷺ advised us, he said, Ittaqu mawatin tuhma Stay away from the places of doubt even. Stay away from those places where you think evil deeds might be taking place. وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا وَإِذَا خَاطِبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّغْوِ مَرُّوا كِرَامًا We they don't even go to places the servants of Allah, righteous and obedient servants of Allah are those who stay away from evil. But if they happen to come upon evil and a place where sin has taken place, they don't engage in it and they don't feel welcome to be part of it. They quickly leave that area. They stay away from the sins. We have, to be, we have to have insight and wisdom. Look ahead and see what would affect us negatively. Stay away from those things which would create a negative 
impression on our, on our hearts. In, indulge in actions which would enlighten your heart and bring to life our spiritual hearts. Be in the company of those, be in the company of those who would remind you of your duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-maru ala dini khalilihi fal yanzur ahadukum man yukhalil. A person will naturally follow the way and the deen of his friends. So be careful who you choose as your friends. Advice from the Prophet ﷺ. We have to do this. We have to assess ourselves. Either we do it now or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do it on the day of Qiyamah. Umar radiallahu used to say, Hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu. You take account of yourself. You stop and ask yourself about your weakness and your, 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 the things you're guilty of. You question yourself and hold yourself accountable qabla an tuhasabu before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes hisab from you. Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the hisab on the day of Qiyamah, when He takes the accountability from us, there is no turning back. We'll beg and beg as much as we want. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell us over and over, the time for that has gone. This is not the time to go back and fix your mistakes. But if we take account of ourselves and we hold ourselves accountable and we reflect on our own lives and our own self, now, then we have the opportunity to reform ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with this wisdom so that we can benefit from it. Let us not just listen and disobey. Let us listen and obey. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفر الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمد ونستعينه ونستغفر ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمتي أبو بكر وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر وأصدقهم حياة عثمان وأقضاهم علي وفاطمة سيدة نساء أهل الجنة والحسن والحسين سيدة شباب أهل الجنة اللهم اغفر لعباس وولده مغفرة ظاهرة وباطنة لا تغادر ذنبا الله الله في أصحابي لا تتخذوهم غرضا من بعدي فمن أحبهم فبحب يحبهم ومن أبغضهم فببغض أبغضهم وخير القرون قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأتم وأهم وأكبر أقيم الصلاة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر